One of the biggest blockbuster trades happened just a few days before the Super Bowl. If you somehow missed the chaos, the Washington Redskins sent their third-round pick and cornerback Kendall Fuller to the Kansas City Chiefs in exchange for Alex Smith. Shortly after, a deal was announced that Smith signed a four-year extension worth up to $94 million with 71 guaranteed. Needless to say, this pretty much officially ends all the Kirk Cousins drama in D.C. Now, there is a chance they could still tag and trade him, but for all intents and purposes, he's not going to be wearing burgundy gold next year. Before we really begin this breakdown, I wanted to show you this comparison between Alex Smith and Kirk Cousins. By pretty much every single metric, Smith had an objectively better season than Kirk. For some of these metrics, like his deep passing accuracy, which we'll discuss later, Smith straight up slaughtered in comparison. Also, the Redskins actually have a really good offensive line when healthy, so I was really happy to see Smith's QB rating when the pocket was kept clean. Now, I did include one negative stat that tells the opposite story, and that's their career net adjusted yards per attempt metric at the bottom of the screen. This metric shows that over the course of Smith's career, he has been known by many as Checkdown Charlie. During the 2016 season, for example, he threw for a full yard per attempt fewer, which is much more in line with his career average. I do think he did a lot this season to spell that notion, and my guess is that Jay Gruden and Bruce Allen are really hoping he continues to do that in Washington. We'll start this breakdown by looking at Smith in the deep passing game. He did a good job all season of pushing the ball down the field. In this play in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs sent Kareem Hunt on a post route from the backfield. This play design has been talked about over and over again, but the key of this play is that it gave the running back a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the linebacker. If you are a betting man, you take that chance any day of the week. This play stretched the defense and gave the Chiefs a lead which they would not surrender for the rest of the game. Based on my tracking, Alex Smith has really developed into a clean pocket passer. He quickly and correctly goes through his progressions and does a good job of seeing the full field from the pocket. The Patriots drop into coverage in this play. This is a form of a combination coverage where New England is playing man on Travis Kelsey while the rest of the defense is playing cover three drop zone. The idea is to remove one of the Chiefs main weapons and hope Smith falls into a trap and throws the ball into coverage. Well, that clearly didn't happen as Smith was able to go through all five reads and make his way to the double move by Chris Conley. The ball placement was perfect where he aimed it between the silent defenders which allowed him to get the first down. Now, before I move on, I want you to notice how Smith throws his ball. He takes a three-step drop from shotgun and ends up at nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. This is the correct distance after the snap, but with an edge rusher coming around the left tackle, he should have shifted further inside. Instead, his feet are a little bit slow and he hangs too far on the backside. Additionally, his throwing motion is a bit longer than I expected. After watching it more closely, Smith has a habit of dipping the ball to his belt level, which elongates his throw. This can be an issue because it allows defenders more time to react to the play. Now, normally, you see this motion more in baseball, but in the NFL, where fractions of a second are important, it sometimes doesn't allow him to complete his throw. Check out this play in the first quarter of the Steelers game in Week 6. The Chiefs run an out combination on the left side of the field. It's third and six, so he tries to place the ball to Harris, right past the sticks. After the snap, Smith drifts to his left and does a full windup, throwing off his back foot. This entire motion and footwork doesn't allow him to put enough velocity on the throw and gives the defender enough time to break up the pass. Moving on, Alex Smith is actually a really good fit in Jay Gruden's offense. He is really adept in the quick passing game and he understands how to pair his pre-snap reads with the proper footwork to get the ball quickly. In this play versus Washington, the Chiefs run a double slant concept on the right while they run a stick concept on the left. Smith knows that with the Redskins and a single high safety look pre-snap, there is a very good chance they're either playing cover one man or cover three zone. Now, based on that, Smith then finds the extra linebacker on the right side of the field and understands conceptually that the double slant concept is dead before the play even begins. With all this in mind, Smith wisely starts his reach to the left. The stick route holds Swearinger in place, and this allows the running back to catch the ball in the flat and gain enough yards for the first down. Now, after a quarterback gets proficient in the quick passing game, he has to be willing to throw it vertically down the field. This is a second key point for this offense, and while it may seem simple, 
Jay Gruden brought up multiple times when dealing with Kirk Cousins. In the Chiefs' Week 16 game versus the Dolphins, Smith showcased his talent and completely terrorized the secondary. Tyreek Hill ran this deep post route, attacking the two-deep zone of this defense. Hill does a great job of bursting past the slot cornerback, while the deep right safety took outside leverage and was not quick enough to break on the ball. This created a hole between these two defenders, while the initial formation and play design pulled the other deep half safety away from this play. Smith's ball is gorgeous, and while he does do that windup that we talked about, the placement and arm strength is clearly there to make this pass. On another deep shot at the end of the second quarter, Smith threw up this ball and gave his receiver the chance to make the play. The Dolphins are playing cover one robber, so Smith realizes that his outside wide receiver has a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with his cornerback. He purposely throws it short and allows Hill to adjust to the ball and bring it in for the long gain. Looking at the Redskins and the Chiefs holistically, there are some pretty interesting similarities between these two teams. They both have a key tight end, and they both have a small receiver that is a mismatch in space. Since Hill has only been on the team for two years, Smith developed a pretty close relationship with Travis Kelsey and trusted him to make plays. Versus Washington in Week 4, this connection with Kelsey was fully on display. Kelsey caught seven passes for over 100 receiving yards, including this 32-yard shot on third down. The Redskins are playing cover two man using Kendall Fuller in the slot. While Fuller is really good against wide receivers, I don't think he matches up as well versus tight ends. In this play, Kelsey swipes away Fuller's hands and attacks the seam between the two safeties. Fuller took a trail position after the snap, so basically the only place this ball could have been thrown is over his shoulder and in stride. That's exactly where Smith placed it, allowing Kelsey to catch it and roll forward for the big gain. While the receiving tight ends and wide receiving core should be similar, I'm a little bit concerned by the lack of a running game for this offense. Whether it was lack of talent at the running back position or using tight ends that aren't good at blocking, the Redskins are literally the opposite in their ability to gain yards on the ground. Additionally, Kansas City's offensive line created close to one-third of a yard more per carry, which adds up over time. My final point that I have to bring up is that the Chiefs did a fantastic job of scheming to the strength of their players. This opened up holes and extended drives for this offense. They used end arounds with Hill, and they used little shovel passes on the goal line in order to create enough misdirection in the defense. All these factors combined allowed the offense to stay in rhythm and certainly helped put Smith into a better position. Overall, while I actually like Alex Smith as a player and do think he fits well into this offense, what the Redskins had to give up is way too much to make this trade happen. Alex Smith for a third round pick would actually have been an okay trade. Seriously, if you consider the reasonable assumption that Kirk Cousins wasn't ever going to sign a long-term deal, then this isn't a bad trade. However, it of course gets worse. They signed him to a four-year extension, and they also traded one of the best slot cornerbacks in the NFL, which makes this trade laughably bad. You really can't make up how terrible this is. Based on this trade, and when I looked over the history of the Redskins for the last decade, in my opinion, this is probably the worst thing I've seen. This may sound like an overreaction, but I would rather give Albert Hainsworth another monster contract and trade for Don McNabb over doing this deal. Seriously, there were so many different solutions the Redskins could have done, and yet they purposely chose the wrong choice. With how many free agent quarterbacks there will be, and how many good college quarterbacks there are, this decision absolutely kills me and really ruins all credibility for this front office. Well, that's all I have for you. This video was sponsored by our friends at BetDSI.com. They want to offer a free $25 wager to any of you of this channel. Considering that Sunday is the Super Bowl, this would be your ideal time to sign up. Now, the Eagles are currently an underdog at plus 4.5, and, and I feel like this game should be close. In fact, I think there's a decent chance that the Eagles could actually win this, so that is what I'll be using my free wager on. Regardless, if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I will have two videos for the Super Bowl, and then shortly after that, I will start looking at prospects for the NFL Draft. If you want to pick one of those players or suggest a future topic, go ahead and click the link to my Patreon account. Now, if you don't have the spare change to donate, do me a favor and follow me on Twitter at Samuel Gold instead.